So this video is really looking at, at rendering in Maya. I'm using Maya 2018. Um, so the predominant renderers are either Maya software or Arnold. <coughs> so if I look at the render settings by clicking on this icon here with the uh, little cog on it, um, you can see I've already got it set up to Arnold Renderer. Uh, if I want to do an image sequence, I need to tell it that I'm going to do uh, change this thing here that says single frame, and generally I put it onto um, <coughs> name underscore hash extension. And in this way, what it does, it it uses the file name or whatever I define as uh, the title up here. Um, but then it will add an underscore and the hash will be a number of the frame and then it will make the extension for me as well. The standard image format here is EXR. That allows for a quite a dynamic range of image. Um, I'm actually going to use PNG uh, for the main part of this because it's just easier to demonstrate um, and it can open in more packages. So you can actually see it in the browsers and the explorer. Um, so I'm going to change that to PNG. I'm not using JPEG. JPEG has a compression on it, so um, it's worth avoiding that if you can, <laughs> um, or only use the very highest um, uh, options on that if you need to. We've also got a, a frame rate, start frame, end frame. So I might want to start this in the middle. So I could say I want from frame, uh, no, end frame, so I say end frame 48. Um, I'm going to do a very short render because uh, rendering can take a very long time. So I'm going to say 40 to 48 gives me eight frames, uh, which isn't very much. But uh, for this demonstration, that will be enough. You've also got an option on which camera you're going to render. In my scene, I've only got one camera, which is a perspective uh, camera that I'm working to. Uh, you have the front side and top views, but they're orthographic, so they'll be very flat. With a perspective camera, I am getting a depth here, um, and I've set up my framing in this window with the perspective camera. And just to make sure I don't lose that position, I've bookmarked this. So if I say create 2D bookmark, I can, if I do move that camera by accident and I lose my framing, I can right click in there and say go to camera view and that will take me back to that position. So I'll remember that before I render because it's very easy just to kind of dive back into the scene and make some adjustments. Um, so to find that framing that I've set up already, it's really important to do that. We also have some preset sizes for the renders. Uh, 4K square, which is 4096 square. Um, and that allows you to kind of crop some of it if you need to. It's rare that you'd use that. Um, the standard size is HD 540, um, which is a good one to start with. If you take that up to the 1080, you're actually rendering four times as much of the screen, um, which will take four times as long. So be aware of that as you're working. Um, if you do have access to the render farm, then you can actually set things off and let them go overnight and uh, the render processing can take um, can work for you in that way um, but yeah don't start doing 4k straight away uh, on your first renders because you want to be able to see it fairly quickly so these are the settings we've got there if you want a specific um, name for your files uh, I'm going to call it CB because this is a Cornell's box that I've, I've recreated there um, and I'll also put uh, the camera per PISP for perspective. So then I'll, that'll just be information for me. If you're working with a lot of different cameras, it's really useful to set those up as well. Um, other options there, by frame, by single frame means it will render every frame once. If you put it by half a frame, it will render double the amount of frames. Or if you want to just skip through and get a kind of rough uh, by 25 frames and it will do one frame for every second and you'll, you'll work with that. The next tab along over here is Arnold Renderer. Uh, this will give you the settings for the Arnold Renderer. Um, the 
Uh, AA is um, an anti-alias. How 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 much does it put into uh, making that sort of making the edges of it or the lines um, neat? So generally, these are all on three two two two. I had turned the diffuse up. You've also got something called adaptive sampling, which if you enable, it will allow it to go up to eight on the um, on the camera double A and here this thing um, when it needs to, and that will give you a significantly better image, but it will take a significantly longer time as well. So that's how I would set up my Arnold render settings. We also have some lighting as well. So Arnold lighting, if you want a very uh, broad look on your scene, if you want to light everything, we have a sky dome light in there that allows us to light a scene. Um, and also, on the rendering tab here, we have some lights, and you may want to use things like directional lights as well. Uh, also, we can make those from the create menu, create lights there. But the Arnold specific lights are on the Arnold menu here, and you can work with those. So, the scene at the moment looks very dark. Um, because I haven't turned on the color and I might not have turned on the told it to use the lights within this scene I do have quite a lot of point lights so I'm trying to make a localized um, test render in there and I can see how uh, how bright that is so that's actually not working for me uh, just double checking that I saved that but I can actually get an idea of what it would look like in Arnold by changing the render in this viewport to Arnold um, and and running that. So this will give me a much slower way of working but I can see how this is set up and I should be able to move around in that scene. It is holding me up. Uh, but you can see I've got either a chrome or a glass look on this kind of cocktail glass shape. Chrome shape there, a wireframe look on this sphere at the back. Um, so I'm getting an idea in the viewport of what that's looking like. So I'll stop that as well, um, so you can get that when you need it. Uh, so that's that's useful to see it there. But actually, when we want to save a frame, we need to use the rendering options up here. So I can say, just let's have a preview of a frame when it's rendered. I've got my render view down here, which actually normally just uh, jumps up in the screen. Um, but because there's a lot of a lot of things happening there, it can take a reasonably long time to render. Uh, and while it's doing that, it is using all the processing power it can. So it can take a little amount of time. It can also slow your machine down a lot when you're when you're working with this as well. So this is a, a 540 HD render and it's probably going to take two to three minutes. Um, so what it's doing it is simulating different lighting in there and bouncing and reflections. Um, so it should get a reasonably high quality image. Um, and we'll bring that we'll open up and have a look at that larger in a moment once it's done. If I want to cancel that, if I get bored or I spot something that has actually gone wrong with that. I can hold down the escape key uh, and that should stop the rendering going on. Uh, it's just pausing for a minute. Uh, trying to get that to go larger. So I can make that be one to one size. Uh, but I can see the amount, the quality I'm getting in there. There's some sort of grainy aspects to it around, which I quite like on some of my renders. You're getting the reflections, the, the darkness where there's no actual environment, and you're getting the spill of color between items. So you actually get a little bit of red on this one and a little bit of green on that one. This wireframe look is a specific Arnold shader that illuminates itself and um, is really done for development work when you're building up uh, modeling sets as well so it's not a, t not a fully textured item. So 
if I'm test rendering like this, I can just save that file, I can keep that, and I can I can compare that to the next shot that I take. Uh, so I'll close that down for a moment and just go back to my render settings because I want to do uh, check that I'm rendering out a depth channel and an alpha channel mask. So I've done a sort of test on it. I, I know it's going to be uh, what I want. Um, I'm going to take this back down to single frame for this demonstration because I just want to show you, uh, well I wanted to do it within a reasonable amount of time. If I want to do it even quicker, I can reduce this further to make that render um, very quick. And often I do very small renders just to test the look at different places. So you can test the lighting if the camera is moving around as well. So on the top here, I've got a rendering option. So I can go to the rendering menu tabs. Uh, and I can go to this option here called render sequence. You've got batch render, which is a network rendering, which we're not using here, but render sequence will allow you to render this, but it does use the processing power of your computer as you're sat there. The batch renderer is a background render, um, which you can do, um, and depending on the, the system you're working on, like in the, in the lab upstairs, we should have Arnold licenses on each machine but you do have to have a, a license to do batch rendering with Arnold, otherwise it watermarks it for you. Um, so I will let this run the course uh, and it will tell us how long it's taken, but it will be about three to four minutes per frame. So if you think about how long you're doing as a piece, if you are getting uh, even at one minute a frame, uh, 25, no, 30 seconds is about 750 frames. That gives you 750 minutes. So you do have to be aware of, um, of this. And the ideal uh, times it will take to, to render. We, we have had a render farm, which I think is um, in the process of getting a new server. Um, so I'm waiting to hear about that. So do let me know if you're having issues with rendering um, in terms of actually doing it. Um, so we can but get the test renders done. Let me know how you how many frames you're thinking you're going to do. Uh, and working with a single image is the best way to set up your composition afterwards. So getting that one high quality render out um, allows you to start working on the composition um, within uh, and post production working out what effects you're going to use for that. So one of the bo boxes I, I ticked on the uh, render settings was Z depth pass. Um, and this should allow me to create a blur, a depth of field blur on this as well when I render it, when I put it into a compositor. So I'm not trying to create the depth of field look within this scene, but I'm trying to sort of post produce that afterwards. You have a bit more control over how it works um, if you have the whole kind of scene in focus like we have here um, and then you post produce the, uh, the depth of field look um, and it just allows you more options to change it after it's rendered. If you're spending this amount of time waiting for each frame you don't want to have to um, to redo it all basically so if you can if you can put other options on, um, on on doing post-production <laughs> then that that works really well so we're very nearly there should be a fairly simple process of doing these last ones but you've got a nice look to this using the Arnold shade Arnold renderer which has some sort of hot spots of light uh, reflections is something you wouldn't get so much if you're using the the Maya software so it might suit a more vector cartoon style. Um, but that has saved my file here. Um, it took 3 minutes and 13 seconds. So um, that's one like frame. for one frame. Yeah. So uh, that's why we need to uh, get this onto a render farm if we're doing a, a lot of frames. And that 
basically uses the system upstairs to render things um, overnight. So I will press this button here. So I've got that frame saved in my project. Um, so I can flip through the different ones. So I can see I haven't actually made many changes to that. Uh, and after I've done that, the next part of the process is to uh, find where that is. That normally goes into an images folder. Uh, CB perspective there. So that's my final image. Uh, it doesn't seem to have done the Z path pass for me, but uh, that has saved that single image one minute ago, which is what I would then bring into After Effects to, if that's an image sequence, I'd bring that into After Effects and work with that there. So that's actually setting up my render settings. Uh, I just want to show you a couple of other things around that subject. So if I go into uh, New Scene and save that one, uh, if I start with a new scene, I'm going to make just a single polygon in there. Uh, and if I go to render this scene with the it'll be a standard Arnold settings, the whole scene will be black um, because I haven't set up lighting in there as well. So one of the simplest things to do is go to lights, sky dome light, which sets up a spherical um, light for you in there. And then when you press um, render, that will come out uh, with a very even white lighting on the background. If you have an HDR image, um, high dynamic range image, you can attach this to the light to give yourself a background to that as well. Um, and that's something that will come in through the uh, the attributes of that light and the color node here. You can attach that to an HDR image, which will give you lighting effects from that as well. So these are very quick ways of getting um, a lighting effect. You can get HDR images if you search for HDRI on the internet. This is probably this is called Freebie HDR. I'm going to go for a reasonably small one. They can be massive. Some of these are 20 megabytes for a 4K HDR one. Um, but I'm just going to pick that, that one, which is slightly smaller. Uh, and that will give me, a, that will be used as the light source for this and also give me a background for that as well. So I'm getting environmental lighting. You see the difference between those two uh, is epic. Um, and I can see the light sources coming on that. Um, and if you pick a different angle, you'll get a um, some of the other background in there as you render. Uh, so this is fairly quick to render. This is using Arnold settings again in the same settings, but I haven't got very complex materials in there. So this is why this is running a lot quicker than the other one. The other one I was using glass and chrome and it's really to test the render settings um, and to, uh, to see how that worked. But a lot of the time you won't be using that. And this color here is coming from the environment of this, this image as well. So you're getting a lot of effects in there for quite an easy uh, setup. I'd also suggest if you're doing an exterior scene using things like directional lights. Um, directional light will give you a very, uh, it'll give you a strong light, but it will kind of work throughout the whole scene. So it doesn't actually matter where it is, it's coming all the way from, uh, from all angles at that position. And it's really designed to emulate things like sunlight. So if I render that one as well, um, we'll see how much difference that makes to the shot bring that across here, but uh, if I go back to the last image it rendered, so I'll be saving these as we go, so you can see the development through there of the renders, um, slightly different angle, but you are getting um, a lot more on it. Some, some of the uh, lighting needs to have very high levels. It used to be that I'd work at fractions, but with the new Arnold uh, rendering system, 
it has a different way of working with light. So if you're lighting for Maya software and Arnold renderer, you will have very different looks as well. So that's turned up to 10, so it's quite high and it's burning out the image slightly, but you're still getting some of the color. So be aware of, of changing the intensities of lights um, and also changing the colors with that as well. If you're using Maya software, I've already set this up for uh, for rendering. Again, it's gonna it's not gonna work with that sky dome. It does have the directional light in there, so it should have that. It's very bright, um, and you can see in there. If I zoom in on that cube for the next render, um, select the item and press F on the mm -hmm. keyboard. Um, I'm just turning that on. If I turn on uh, the lighting option here, I should be able to see where it's bright and where it's dark. Um, so it's very bright in that area, um, and it just really means that I've, I'm overcooking it. So if I'm working in my software, directional lights I will have always at less than one. In fact, I recommend that all of the directional lights in your scene shouldn't add up to more than, um, more than one. So we're getting that in there. Got some lines on it. It's not ideal, um, but these you can see a sort of slight look of the the sky dome light in there as well. So I'm wondering if that's actually rendering. So I'll delete that and render this again, and I think I'll get a cleaner image with that as well. Um, Where the, lines the lines, I think, is because it was using this sky dome light. That's an object in the scene but it didn't know, because it was using some of the Arnold render settings, I think it was actually rendering some of them whereby it actually really shouldn't. So I'll take that, I took that one out for this one. Again, with the, the Maya software, I find that there's a very easy setup to get the, some good quality settings with that. The first tab, the common tab, works in the same way. Uh, but with the Maya software, you're working at a custom quality, which is a low anti-aliasing uh, for draft and preview to start with. If you want to heighten that, put it onto production quality um, to start with, and then you should get a better look. So you'll see these kind of edges along here will get improved if you're changing the, the quality of the render. Um, I'll just see if that does actually work on this quite quite a simple image, um, but you should get a different look or kind of more, so you see that's more even on that spot than that one there. So changing the production quality actually uses that, that kind of blurring between the colors and the pixels um, to improve the look of that as well. 